Hey guys, Amanda here. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different style than what I normally do. Usually I record a video and then record a voiceover later, but I thought for today's video it might be easier to do both at the same time. Okay, so I wanted to do this video because the other day I cut a ton of card panels and bases and something that I used to struggle with was keeping everything uniform and even. So just say I cut 10 panels, they would all come out 10 different sizes. So over the years I have figured out some tips and tricks that have worked well for me and I thought it might be helpful for those of you who struggle with this problem or are new to card making and paper crafting. The first tip I'm going to show you is how to cut paper with a guillotine style trimmer. This one I'm using here is the Tim Holtz uh, Tonic Studios one, which I really like. And if you don't have this one but you have a guillotine style trimmer, this tip will work for you. One thing I want to say about this particular trimmer is when you go to line up your paper and measure it, you want to be very aware of where you're placing your paper. This has indents every quarter inch, so you can easily line up your paper and cut, and you don't have to think too much about it. However, you want to make sure that when you put your piece of paper on, I'm just going to use one that I've already cut, if you put your piece of paper on, you butt it up right against the line, right against. You don't want to go over, you don't want to go in half, you want to butt it up right before that line. So you'll see here that the four and a quarter and five and a half marks are dashed and that's again just for easy measuring. Because of that I thought that you just butted it up right against that little arrow and it'd be great. Turns out that is not what you want to do. You just want to go right outside the dash. And this might be different for your style of guillotine trimmer but that's what I discovered with this one. Okay. So what I'm going to start out by doing is taking um, a letter size piece of paper, 8.5 by 11, and first things first, I am going to measure this because I've noticed that some of the cardstock isn't always exactly 11. Sometimes it's bigger, and in this case, it is bigger. It's just a tiny bit bigger, but that is going to make a huge difference in keeping your card panels even. So what I like to do is start off with a piece of paper, obviously, and I just line it up right up to my little dash marks, and I make sure it's straight and even the whole way down. So now holding it very firm so it doesn't shift, slice it down, and then now you have two pieces. And you'll see, because the full size wasn't perfectly measured, this part is off. So you'll see here that it's just a tiny bit extra. I don't know if you can really see that. I think so. Um, it's just a tiny bit extra, but again, it will make a huge difference and it'll be very frustrating if you want things to be even. So what I do is I take the piece that we cut that's the perfect size and set the other one aside and then take the trimmer and you lift up the blade partially. You don't want to lift it up all the way. You want to make sure that it's only partially lifted. And you want to make sure that you don't get your fingers under there. Be careful. Don't bump it. Okay, so I'm taking the piece of paper and I'm sliding it in and butting it up right against that blade. So it can't go any, any further than the blade. So go ahead and make sure it's all lined up. That looks good. Okay, so we're going to keep that there. And here's where we start to get everything all nice and uniform. So I like to take sticky notes, the classic style, not the accordion style, that's important. You could do full sheet stickies if you wanted to, but you don't need to. So I like to take off a thick stack of post-its. You can make it as thick as you want, but you want to make sure it's not too thin. And then we're going to take the side with the adhesive and we're going to butt that up right against our piece of cardstock. And so we know that it can't go any further than the size of the 
cardstock. So once I have that butted up, making sure everything's straight and it looks good, I take some frog tape. Um, this is just painter's tape, but you could use washi tape or micropore tape. That would work out well. But this is what I always use, so that's what I'm using today. Okay, so you take it and you put it right over the post-it notes, making sure to really burnish it down well because the adhesive is sticky on the post-it note, but it very low tack so it's it easily shifts and you don't want to do that because we're trying to keep everything the same so that's buttered up against there paper still looks good everything looks good so then we can lift that up set it aside and we'll take the larger cardstock that we had and butt it up against there still making sure that you're not in there weird always good to just check before you cut so there we go. Hold it down firm again. Slice. It slices off that tiny bit of extra cardstock. Then we'll lift it up. And here you go. You have two perfectly even pieces of cardstock. And you'll pretty much get it straight every time if you use that method. I'm going to set these aside. So what I do when I'm bulk cutting is I do all the papers one orientation and then I turn it and I remeasure and do it the other way. And then that way it's just an assembly style. It just saves time so you don't have to switch it after each sheet. Okay, so this next tip is using a different style of trimmer. I really like this one because it has this arm that swings out and so you can measure all the way up to 15 inches, which I appreciate because I do a lot of paper crafts that are 12 by 12 sheets of paper. So I really like that. I grab both of my trimmers often, but you definitely don't need both. Okay, so for this style, I noticed for Lisa's Fiskars, is instead of butting up right in front of your measurement line, you want to go all the way to the end of the measurement line. You want to cover up all of the black there. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece of paper here and butt it up right the back edge of that measurement. Okay, and again, make sure that everything looks good and lined up. It's all straight down the, down the entire edge of the paper. And then I'm feeling pretty good about this measurement. So what I'm going to do with this style, because I don't have a blade that I can partially lift up and butt it up against, I take my post-its again and I just butt it up right against that paper, just like I did with the guillotine style. The only difference is I don't have the blade to make sure that it is perfect. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to tape it down again, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And you'll see here that it is also nice and straight, lining up with the post-it. Okay, so I'm going to see if my measurement was right. I'm going to slice it in half. And then, okay, again, it's a little bit bigger, just like the last one. I'm going to take this piece here and cut it a little bit. Now this style of trimmer is a little bit trickier with cutting thinner pieces of paper. So what you do when, it's a th when you need to slice it thinner is you start in the center of the paper. You don't want to start at the edge because it might um, crinkle it. So start in the middle of the cardstock and then once you make a slice you can go back through the normal way and just slice it. And then there you go. Okay, so there you go. Line it up. Look at that. It measures perfectly. Everything's great. So now you are left with, in this case, four either card bases if you want to score them down the middle, or you can move your 
post-it notes over to the four and a quarter mark and make them into panels. And just for time's sake, I'm not going to do the other orientation because you get the general idea and I want to save some time and make this video not too long. So that's something that I find very helpful for me and I hope you find it helpful as well. If you have any other questions or requests or would like any other tips and tricks, please let me know. You can leave a comment down below and I will do my best to make it happen. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and card making and paper craft videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything from me. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!